When you look for champions, you look to CBS Sports. And since the Buffalo Bills have been celebrating in public, but now the happy days are here again. Quarterback Jim Kelly ignited a dramatic overtime victory over Miami last week. Lo and behold, Buffalo now shares the view from the penthouse of the AFC East, and Coach Marv Levy likes what he sees. The Washington Redskins also have good reason to smile these days. Quarterback Jay Schrader is back from a shoulder injury. It was Schrader who passed Washington into the NFC title game last year. His return to form is critical to the team's chances. Once again, the Skins are on the warpath. They're out to protect their lead in the NFC East. It's been downhill for decades in Buffalo. Not even the juice could squeeze out a title. But Jim Kelly is a winner and won't settle for being second best. And make no mistake about it, they are excited in western New York. And here at Rich Stadium this afternoon, a good one. The Washington Redskins against the Buffalo Bills. Weather conditions always important here. 52 degrees and cloudy good conditions for football. The Redskins atop the NFC East with a record of 5-1. They have a two-game lead over the Dallas Cowboys. And a surprise in the AFC. Four teams locked at the top, and the Bills have a share for the lead at least for the first time in four years. And good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. And despite the Redskins' 5-1 and one start, Joe Gibbs has genuine concern about this game because there has been a definite resurgence in this franchise. And last week, by beating Miami and the Giants the week before, they have a taste of what it could be all about. They have a great hero here in Jim Kelly, the quarterback. They have near capacity crowd today, and now they've signed Cornelius Bennett, so they have a lot to be thankful for and looking forward to. Terry Bradshaw, my partner, let's talk about the Redskins' concern, which is trying to establish that game on the ground, and George Rogers is getting the start today. Rogers has not played that well, and by his own admittance, this is a key game, a career game for him. He said it's, I have to play well today. Neither he nor Kelvin Bryant have been healthy. They need that running tack to go today if the Redskins are to indeed win this football game. Joe Gibbs says he wants balance on offense. His defense has been good, and Jim Kelly is going to be the guy throwing against that defense. What might Kelly and the Bills have in store for Washington? Richie Badabone, the defensive coordinator for the Redskins, said this about Kelly. He is the most accurate passer we will face all year. He's very similar to Phil Sims when it comes to accuracy. He throws strikes. So from that point of view, they've played against someone like him should help the Redskins. Kelly will move the ball around to Burkett and he will throw the ball deep and short. Should be very exciting. It usually is with Jim Kelly and Jay Schrader for that matter, the Redskin quarterback. And the Redskins have won the toss and they'll receive. And Keith Griffin is back for the Redskins and Scott Norwood from Alexandria, Virginia and James Madison University. A hero last week for the Bills kicks off and the ball goes into the end zone and a touchback, and the Redskins will take over on the 20-yard line. So Jay Schrader, who brought the Redskins back last week against the Jets, will lead the Redskins in this game. And the defense that he'll face for the Buffalo Bills, Sean McNanny, Fred Smurlis, and Bruce Smith up front. Shane Conlon and Scott Radisick, Ray Bentley and Darrell Talley are the linebackers. Derek Burrows, rookie Nate Odoms at right cornerback. Dwight Drain is starting in place of Lawrence Johnson. And Mark Kelso, the free safety. First down and 10 at the 20-yard line. One back offense, George Rogers. And on a reverse to Art Monk on the first play. And Monk gets a first down and surprises the Bills and brings it out close to the 35-yard line before Ray Bentley makes the stop, a gain of 16 yards. Some of the criticism of Joe Gibbs in Washington has been that when the replacement teams were playing, Dick, they were exciting reverses, gadget plays. Well, this is a gadget. It's a reverse. Maybe he read the papers, came out first play, big first down. And, of course, when you have an aggressive defense like the Bills do, particularly in linebacker, you may take advantage of that. So Art Monk, an outstanding receiver and can move, first and 10 at the 36-yard line. In motion is Clint Didier. 
Raider to throw, and on first down, hits Monk at the 41-yard line, a gain of five. Derek Burrows makes the tackle for the Buffalo Bills. The rest of the Redskins' offense, and they're going with Rodgers, Monk, and Gary Clark are the wide receivers. Don Warren, the blocking tight end, and Clint Didier, the H-back. Up front, it's Jacoby, McKenzie, Grimm, Thielman, and Mark May. Second down and five for the Redskins. Raider calling an audible, it appears, at the line. Now Don Warren moves, and up the middle goes Rogers. And Rogers is close to first down yardage and appears to have it beyond the 46-yard line. This time, Ray Bentley, with help from the strong safety Dwight Drain, made the tackle. Schrader that time taking a little bit more time looking at the linebackers. He saw Radisek, number 97, Dick, come up inside. When he saw that, he automatically audible to the right side running away from him. Of course, the big problem for opposing defenses is who to double if you have only one man to double, whether it be Monk or Clark, and it leaves Diddy or one of the receivers clear. Right now, Monk goes in motion, first and 10 at the 47. Redskins in their own territory, and Rodgers goes outside. Good yardage, and another first down for Washington. Just inside the Buffalo 40-yard line, and it's Mark Kelso at a gain of 14. Good block by Don Warren there. By sending Monk in motion, they took the support of the corner away and placed it on the burden on that of the safety. And that time, there was no one outside to support to stop the run. Rodgers simply gets outside and picks up another first down. He's had the turf toe injury. And then he had the shoulder injury in the opening game against the Eagles and was put on injured reserve. And people have been wondering, when is George Rogers going to play? And today is the day. First and 10 at the 30. Good second effort brings him to the 35-yard line, and that was Shane Conlon, the rookie outside linebacker, number one pick from Penn State there. If you have any questions about the ability of Rodgers to cut on the toe, this was a good example right there where he was able to plant the right foot, cut back inside, shows right there that, hey, I'm not having any bad effects from this toe. Like he said, I've got to have a big game, and so far he's doing just that. He only carried once last week, got for five yards, good enough for a first down, and he's the only regular running back with a touchdown on the ground for Redskins this year. Second and six at the 35. And in the lane, Rogers, first down, barrels inside the 25, and right now the Redskins are taking apart the Bills' defense. That play good for 11 yards with Kelso and Bruce Smith on the stop. Look on the left of your screen as you see the tackle, Mark May, 73, pulling inside along with the tight end, Warren following him. That's the old bullets play that Riggins ran so well where they pull the guard, the tackle, and the tight end to that side and go to the left, go away from him. May was kicked in the kidney against the Jets, and he's a native of Oneonta, New York, near Buffalo. First and 10 at the 24. Redskins moving on the first possession. is down and we may have a pass interference call against Buffalo. We'll wait of course for the referee Jerry Markbright to explain it. If you can read his lips his microphone isn't working. Nate Odoms the rookie cornerback out of Wisconsin illegal contact right here. 84, you see coming down, Clark, 37, Rome's coming up, Odom's that is, coming up, jams him, then puts a hand on him again. You can't do that. It's tough for rookies or anyone to go against the likes of Clark and Monk, I would suppose. Odom's is the kind of kid, though, that likes that. He talks big and he hopes, you know, if you're going to talk big, you better play big. So it's a first down for the Redskins on the Bills' 19. So finally, the Bills play Rodgers well, and it was Mark Kelso, the free safety, and the leading tackler on Buffalo. And Rodgers is stopped at the 17-yard line. If the Redskins score, they can feel 
kind of confident, although lately they've been a come-from-behind team. I would, I would say that if they can <laughs> score first, according to this graphic, 41 victories and only four defeats, I, I would feel very comfortable if I were Joe Gibbs. 41 and four, amazing. Ron Pitts and Lawrence Johnson are in. Six defensive backs for the Bills. On second and nine, the ball spotted at the 18 of the Bills. Kelvin Bryant is in the game, a receiver out of the backfield. Carries here, and Bryant, wending his way, is stopped at the 12-yard line. He'll be shy of a first down by about three yards or so. And making the stop for the Bills, Dwight Drain and Mark Kelso, the two safeties. You're going to see the left guard here coming and pulling and blocking. Coming and pulling is the tackle inside, inside, counter action, and then Rodgers follows him right back up inside. The old Bullets player. That's Kelvin Bryant, 24. In his first appearance in the ballgame. Third down and four. Bryant stays in the game at the 13 yard. After controlling the ball for nearly five minutes of this first quarter, the Bills defense holds, and now the Redskins will try a field goal, and Ali Haji Sheik, who hit the game winner with less than a minute to go against the Jets last week, will attempt a field goal, a 30-yard attempt for Haji Sheik. One for three since coming to Washington, straighter holds. is good. So the Redskins on their first possession get three points out of it. Haji Sheik with a 30-yard field goal will be back with Washington's kickoff after this. The Redskins and they're up three to nothing over the Buffalo Bills here and Steve Cox will kick off for the Skins. Rob Riddick is the deep man in the middle and he's flanked by Steve Pastor and Jamie Mueller. Bills have had no trouble putting points on the board when they've had their regular team in. They've averaged over 32 points a game, so it'll be an interesting test against what has been an outstanding Redskin defense. Kick is short, and it's going to Riddick at the four. And Riddick is forced to the side and is stopped shy of the 20-yard line, and a good play by Terry Orr. So that's where Jim Kelly will lead the Buffalo Bills. Riddick has scored a bunch of touchdowns this year and leads the NFL. So the cheers are for Jim Kelly, who led the comeback against Miami last week. Man, Butts, Grant, and Manley up front for the Redskins. Kaufman, Mallott, and Coleman, the linebackers. Green, Wilburn, Walton, and Bowles in the secondary. They spot the ball just shy of the 20-yard line. And throwing on first down, Kelly... Metzelars, the tight end. A 15-yard gain to Metzelars. Monty Coleman making the stop. Kelly simply coming back. The tight end, Metzelars, on the right side will go down and read the safety's 15 yards. Once he sees that Walton backs up, he sits down in there, and Kelly finds him and gets him the football. So reading quarterback, looking to the left, notice that, turns around, finds his man. There's Metzelars, and there's a big first down. Jerry, they don't have really many burners in the receiving category, but they have guys that can hold on to the ball. First and 10 for the Bills on the 35, and Harry is Carl Byram, the fullback rusher and he stopped for no gain at the 35 yard line by Rich Millot the middle linebacker a lot of respect for Charles Mann number 71 left defensive end for the Redskins if you're leading or tied in the NFL with five sacks this guy has you double team him as you can see the tackle on that side Devlin and Messelar is the tight end both doubling man Second down and 10. Charles Mann off to a tremendous start and determined to gain all pro status this year. On the top play, Ronnie Harmon. Gets away and Ronnie Harmon. Close to first down yardage at the 45. May have been stopped a yard short. Penalty marker is down as Alvin Walton made the stop on Ronnie Harmon, the number one pick out of Iowa last year making his first pro start against the Dolphins a week ago. 
Here's Jerry Markbright. Holding number 51, offense, second down. That's Jim Richer, the left guard, and a former number one out of North Carolina State. The offense for the Bills. You've seen Harmon and Kelly and Byron. Burkett, who's been their top receiver, and Andre Reed are the two wideouts. Metzelar is the tight end, and Wilford, Richard, Wilford, Richard, Hull, Vogler, and Devlin are up front. Watch Devlin, the right tackle. He's a good one. Second and 20, back at the 24, following the penalty. And a look at pass is dropped by Harmon. And he would have picked up good yardage. Walton was covering on the play. Isolating that time, bringing Ronnie Harmon, 33, out on the backfield, and then putting a strong safety, Walton, up to cover him man for man is exactly what Kelly wants. He wants to get the isolation and then run him down and bring him inside. There's no one in the middle. All Harmon has to do is make the catch, and then it's a foot race. Talking to Ted Marchabrota, the passing coach, the quarterback coach, he says similar characteristics does Kelly have with Burt Jones, who he coached with the Baltimore Colts. Nice comparison. Tim Morris in the nickel back on third and 20. Kelly gets time and completes the pass. Nine yards short of a first down and making the catch is Burkett, who had a grand day against the Dolphins with nine receptions. And now he has to be held back as he went after one of the Redskins. Looked like Darrell Green for the moment. In any event, it'll be fourth down. And coming into the game to punt for the Bills is John Kidd. Dick, we can look for Wilburn and Andre Reed, two wide receivers for the Buffalo Bills, to run a lot of deep comeback routes. They feel they can turn their corners and come back to the line of scrimmage. Kid will kick, and Eric Yarber is deep. Eight minutes and 32 seconds to go in the first quarter. Parker is down, and Kid gets off a terrific boot. This will go into the end zone. A 63-yard kick. But there's a flag on the play. Line judge is Bob Beeks. And Kidd signals that he's going to have to kick it again. And the Bills now are pointing that the flag was against the Redskins. Six men on the line of scrimmage. So Kidd will boot it again. Marv Levy in his first full year as head coach of the Buffalo Bills. He did preseason television for a couple of years here, and he says he got to really get a line on a lot of these guys before he came here. Well, that's one of the things he did when he first came in last year. The thing Levy did was spend most of his time with special teams because he felt like he didn't know exactly what was going on with the offense or the defense, so he just contributed his efforts to the special team. So maybe that's a carryover in 87 as he has to be disappointed with the alignment. Not enough people on the line of scrimmage. This time, Kidd will be booting from the 16-yard line. good as the last time by any stretch but it's over to the sideline and goes out of bounds between the 35 and 40 yard line and a 30 yard kick and a pickup of 18 plus yards for the Redskins so a costly penalty for the Bills so the Redskins go on offense for the second time leading three to nothing almost midway through this first quarter out upwards of 70,000 here the Redskins lead 3-0. This is Dick Stockton along with Terry Bradshaw. The Bills, 3-3, three three, but one of four teams tied for the lead in the AFC East. And the Redskins, who have been very successful on the road, 5-1 this year. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. Make it to 39. Rodgers, running back, gets the ball. And is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Ray Bentley and Tally. Tally penetrated first. Tally coming from the outside will blitz. Rogers will do this and go back. Then they will pull, pull, guard, and tackle the old guts play. But Tally is the man, number 56, who gets in, disrupts the whole play. Look at this. He's in the backfield almost before Schrader hands the football off to Rogers. There is Darrell Tally, who his presence has also helped Bruce Smith who has been the best, best pass rusher. 
Kelvin Bryan in the ball game. In now as a receiver possibility at second and 11. After 38, loss of one. Raiders pass is overthrown. And it was intended for Ricky Sanders. And it'll be third down. Schrader has not had problems with the long pass, has he, this year? It's been the other way. It's been the other way. Normally when you have a strong-arm quarterback like Schrader, the tendency is he's more accurate from 30 yards on, 20 yards on, because time he gets that gun going, he can really drill it in there, and the pass will beat the defensive back. It's the short passes where he has to set up quick and then pull something, take something off of that gun that gives the strong-arm quarterback his greatest problem. What did Joe Gibbs say? The ball looks in from the nose dies on the short number. Third down and 11 at the 38-yard line, and now Sanders comes in motion. the ball it's a free ball and the Redskins recover I believe back at the 26 as the ball seemed to slip out of Schrader's hands Mark May the right tackle alertly made the fumble recovery and that could have been really big trouble for Schrader and the Redskins a lot of games going on as you see Smith coming to the outside and Jacoby doing a fine job with help on the inside, but Schrader getting ready to throw the ball down the middle to number 84. Clark simply had the ball slip out of his hands. And a good inside rush by Leon Seals, a rookie. So Steve Cox will punt from the 10-yard line. Ron Pitts is back for the bill. So the Bills equal to the task defensively there. Another penalty marker down on a punt. And Pitts on the run has it at the 43 and gets near midfield before Tim Morrison makes the tackle, but another flag on the kicking situation. Jerry Markbright talking things over with Bob Beeks will tell us what it's all about. And that'll be declined by the Bills. Illegal formation foul. Number 37, offense, six men in the line of scrimmage, penalty declined, first down, timeout. So Joe Gibbs has a lot to be concerned about here, even though his team has a 3-0 lead, because when we come back, Jim Kelly and the Bills will be at midfield as they start their second drive of the game. Redskins leading here in the first quarter, and Joe Gibbs was really upset over the problems that the special teams had last week. Four penalties. Cox didn't punt well, and Yarber didn't return well, and there were all sorts of problems in blocking. The penalty there hurt them. First and ten, just shy of midfield for the Bills, and the pass is intercepted, or let's see, it's incomplete. Walton dropped it on the pass intended for Andre Reed, and he was wide open, Terry. Andre Reed, man, they like to take down Dick and work the routes back to the inside. Simply coming off here, as you can see, Daryl Green. Everyone wants to isolate Daryl Green and throw on him. And the reason ever says why he's one of the best players. You see he's picked off there and a drop pass by Harmon. But the reason is very simple. Green is always man for man. And as a quarterback, you know exactly where the man-man coverage is. And once you know that, you simply go to work on it. Right now they're going to work on Daryl Green. sure if it's something in his ankle or foot. The green coming across that time chasing Reed was picked as you saw right there on the left side of your screen and knocked off so you know could have got a helmet and the ribs breast knocked out who knows. Green of course five interceptions led the Redskins last year and still looking for his first pickoff of this season and he's going to come out of the ball game. So Daryl Green is going to get a breather here and Tim Morrison who was expected to start the opening game of the year and suffered an ankle injury in the final preseason game will now come in for him number 41. The Bills by the way picked up almost 30 yards in the exchange of punts and so we'll see if Jim Kelly can take advantage of that on second down and 10. That's what he did against Miami a career high 359 yards. 23 remaining in the first quarter. The Redskins in front, three to nothing. Kelly up the middle and finds an open Andre Reed this time, and he holds on, holds on. The whistle had blown. There's no fumble. And the Bills still short of a first down at the 41 of Washington. Rich Mallott and Alvin Walton combined to make the stop on Andre Reed. 
who was effective late in the game against Miami. They had doubled Chris Burkett, and he caught a big 29-yard pass to set up a big score. Green is back in the lineup for the Redskins. Wilburn goes out. Third down and one. Cook and Hamill are in the game defensively for the Redskins. Rob Riddick in the backfield with Byron. And it's going to be Riddick, and he did not make it, I don't believe. He tried to leap over the line and couldn't. And it appears as if the Redskins have held, and they have. And it was Charles Mann who came up and stormed Rob Riddick back. It's fourth down. And the Bills are going to go for it on fourth down and about a yard. And they've got a good yard to They've got a good yard to go. One of the problems in short yardage is that you have to have your offensive lineman getting underneath the defense to enable to drive them back. That time, the Redskins got underneath the Bills and drove them back. Fourth and a good yard. Thank and they go to Riddick, and he gets the first down. You don't succeed, but the old saying, try, try again. This time, instead of going up and over, Riddick goes in, out, and up and gets the first down. Same play, just two different ways of getting there. Well, the Bills now have succeeded on three of five fourth down conversions this year. So Marv Levy not afraid to try for that. And when you're three and three and tied for the AFC East division winner, on where you're going to really improve and be a champion if you come out and make fourth downs. Campbell. Bills on the Redskins, 38, first down. They send Harmon wide to the right. Kelly in trouble, and his pass is thrown out of bounds. Good thinking by Kelly. I guess it takes a while for quarterbacks to learn to throw it away instead of eating the ball. Well, one of the problems you'll have with a young quarterback is that he'll panic too soon and take off and not allow time for his routes to make to go through them and, 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 and make the right adjustments. A guy like Kelly comes in, sees things happening, feels pressure, gets outside, has the vision downfield, nothing there, throws it away. You see, Will Wolford is shaken up, but so is Dave Butts, who goes to the sideline after putting on the rush against Kelly, and he'll be replaced by Dean Hamill. So Hamill, number 78, who started at defensive tackle in the first half of last year. Hamill will come in for Butts. Butts had the flu coming out of the hospital to play against the Jets. Played extremely well, as the, old de the whole defense did. Hamill, young man that is a good backup, a good steady guy, and gets his opportunity to play now. They're working at the left leg of Dave Butts, who had the flu. And you're right, he went down under 300 pounds. He's about 303 right now. Normally, he plays at 310. Oh, he's a little light, huh, Dave? <laughs> Been in the hospital most of the week, but now he's on the sideline. <laughs> Second down and 10. Bills at the skin 38. Kelly and a fine catch by Andre Reed on a pass that might have been intercepted because Redskin defenders were right there. Green and Walton stop his forward progress and they'll stop it at the 34-yard line. Gain of four. A lot of pressure on Kelly coming up the middle as you'll see on the right side. Safety coming up, balls 23, blitzing. Kelly sees that as Walton, 40, turns around, and the ball actually, had he not had his back turned to the receiver, he, he would have been in position to make the interception. On third and five, and Kelly looking at a passing situation, Steve Hamilton and Marcus Cook, good pass rushers, have come in for the Redskins. 340 remaining in the first quarter. Kelly looking for help, and down he goes back at the 45. And it was Marcus Cook and Dexter Manley who were both back there. Steve Hamilton as well. And a loss of 11 yards on the play. Cook, who was their top pick last year. This should really have been a problem for the Buffalo Bills. It's a plain, simple stunt by the tackle coming inside. As you see, 64 coming in, Hamilton and Cook outside. but. They did a fine job of penetrating and then forcing the Kelly to hold the ball and take the sack. Kid will punt and Yarber goes back for the Redskins. Good kick and a good kick. And it bounces at the five and the Bills had a man down there to try.
try to keep it in play. Roland Mitchell, the rookie cornerback, and he could a 44-yard kick. And the Redskins will take over. They gave that sack, by the way, to Dexter Manley. That's his first in a long time. We're back here, Washington leading 3 0, and Manley has gone a long time without a sack. A friendly rivalry between Manley and Charles Mann. Well, it goes back to 85 when Manley won the sack deal with a 15 and a half, and Mann had 15. I'll get into this a little more after this play. They went down on the wire, didn't they? And Mann was telling us yesterday about it. George Rogers, the running back. And a play action. Great fake by Schrader, and Clark downfield makes the great catch. Clark with a tremendous catch, well defended by Nate Odoms, good for 51 yards and as good a fake as you can see a quarterback make. You only use play actions after you've been successful with the same play running it. Now, as you see, that's the Bullets play that they've run successful three times. Now they come out with a play action on first down, which is a running down for the Redskins, and then turn around and do the thing that, that Clark and Schrader do best, and that's throw the ball deep. That's the longest reception by Gary Clark this year. Ricky Sanders replaces Clark. First and 10 for the Redskins at the Bills, 29-yard line. And Rogers cutting inside. Gets two yards, and that's all. Nearly two minutes remaining in this first quarter. Veteran nose tackle Fred Smurlis was there to make the stop. You can see now they've been running the bullets. Now we're going to see just what they call power blocking, man blocking, everyone. And then George will show up and he'll make a cut back up inside. Pulling the guards and tackles, they change it up and go power blocking. 63 McKenzie outside. Now look at George. He sees it and cuts back in against the pressure. Kelvin Bryant comes in the game in the backfield. Second down and nine. The Buffalo 28. The 17-yard line. Art Monk, that's only his ninth reception of the year, but three of them have been for touchdowns. Mark Kelso, the free safety, gain of 11. Art Monk is a great compliment to Gary Clark in the fact that he is able to maneuver short, medium, and long, while Clark is primarily a deep threat, and then they bring in Ricky Sanders, 83, and he compliments Clark by both of them having the deep threat. They bust, by the way, is Bruce Lee. And he's showing the style that made him a thousand yard runner, both with the Saints and the Redskins. Fred Smurlis made the stop there with help from Ray Bentley. Talking to Schrader last night, I said, You've got to be a little concerned about the way you played last week. And he said, No big deal. I'm coming back and shaking the rust off. And game. He said, One thing I'm, I'm tired of is third down long and throw it. So this, this running attack is going to help Schrader because if they're successful with it, it'll take a lot of pressure off of him and he'll be able to throw 10, 15 passes and be comfortable with it. Well, Joe Gibbs said at the end of the Joe Theismann era was keep the ball on the ground with Riggins and then Schrader had a big play come from behind offense. Now he's looking for the balance. That's what the Redskins are trying to establish. That's the end of the first quarter. Three to nothing, Washington. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Dodge Cars and Trucks. For performance on road and off, it's got to be a Dodge. Tandy Computers, because there is no better value, only at Radio Shack. And by Delta Airlines, we love to fly, and it shows. This is Dick Stockton and Terry Bradshaw at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. Overcast skies, but comfortable temperatures. The Bills lead it or trail the Redskins 3-0 on a field goal by Ali Haji Sheik on the first series. George Rogers in it. Running back second and five for the Redskins on the Bills 12. Tremendous edge for the Redskins 
both in passing and in rushing. And if you want to talk about how well the Redskins have rushed, they have outgained the Bills 62 to 2 in the first quarter. And more than anything else for Joe Gibbs, time of possession nearly doubling what the Bills have got. And that's exactly what he wants. He wants to run the football, eat up the, the time on the clock, you know, take it down 50 50, nice balance, and score touchdown. Sanders in as the third wide receiver, Kelvin Bryant. There are a lot of pass catches in there now for the Redskins on third and five. Trader finds Bryant, touchdown, Redskins. A 12-yard touchdown pass to Kelvin Bryant. His third touchdown reception of the year, and the Redskins go out in front nine to nothing. Very awfully tough to cover those receivers. Send everybody in motion. Bring Bryant down. Go to the outside. Tally over. Plays it. Bryant back inside. Easy touchdown. You have to double him. And in effect, that's what they try to do. Clark going deep, as you can see there. But look at Tally. He gets caught up on the, on the outside. Moved by Bryant. Bryant beats him inside six. Haji Sheik's kick is good. And with only seven seconds elapsed in the second quarter, Kelvin Bryant has caught the touchdown pass, and it is now a 10 to nothing lead in favor of the Redskins. For Jay Schrader, that is his third touchdown pass of the year. He has thrown one interception. Now we'll have a chance, Terry, to see those two defensive ends we were talking about, Mann, who's having a great year, and Manley, who picked up his first full sack of the year, continue their rivalry. Right. I'll, I'll finish that story. Man, number 71, gets a sack at the end of the game, the last game, the 16th game in 1985, to take over the sack lead, which would have given him 15 and a half of the year, and he would have beaten Manley. Manley on that play was offside. They <laughs> took away the sack from Man, and Manley ends up leading the NFL in sacks. They've got a little rivalry going, which makes it's good for both of them because they compete on the field to get to the quarterback. And as a quarterback, the last thing you want is to know that two of the best rushing defensive ends in the National Football League got little bets going. That's, that's death. That, you know, that's horrible. Hey, if you get the sacks and the wins, why not? Sure. Rob Riddick is back. He's the middle man of the three. And Steve Cox kicking off for the Redskins, who now lead it 10 to nothing. And it sails deep and out of the end zone. The wind heading that way helped Cox's kick. The scoring drive to give the Redskins their 10-0 lead, and Schrader completed three of four in that drive for 74 yards. Big one, of course, was to Clark for 51 yards on a nifty play. Machine gun Kelly back <laughs> in the game. That's what he is. With a nice offense. This man can throw short, medium, as well as long. And the thing they do with their offense is hit. His responsibilities as a quarterback are to read the coverage, which is very unlike what a lot of quarterbacks do. First and 10 after 20. In motion goes Ronnie Harmon for the Bills. And here's Byron, the fullback, and he gets nothing. Byron coming into the game as the top rusher is met by Rich Malott. Malott continues to be the middle linebacker for the Redskins. Neil Olkowitz suffered the knee injury. In the preseason opener, he's back but has not regained his starting spot. Malott normally plays middle in the passing situations, and Richie Pettibone says you don't change things when they're working. No, and if Kaufman, the left outside linebacker, something should happen to him, then Malott would go out and start there, and Okowitz would move back up to the middle linebacker. Second and ten. Kelly looking one way, going... for Jim Kelly. Well, we've seen this isolation so far earlier. Bowles and Harmon, man for man, have taken him outside because they realize that number 40, Bowles, is, I mean, number Walt, Fort Walton's going to have him man for man. That time he gets by and Harmon does and makes the catch. Terry, that's the first time today that Kelly has completed two passes in a row. Won't be the last. No. Harmon was the hero against the Houston Oilers in the second game of the year with a 10-yard reception for a score. Bills in Redskins territory at the 38 first down. Kelly with a lot of time. Mark 
tackled down, maybe holding with it, catches it, and is brought down immediately by Wolf at the 35. But there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. It appears to be holding against Buffalo. If there's one problem that Kelly has, and he admits this, he says, I hold the football too long. I put a lot of pressure on my lineman, and I'm criticized for it, but I've made more big plays by holding it longer than I have given up sacks. And he said, I'm going to continue to hold the ball. That's a second major penalty by Jim Richard, an eight-year veteran. The big veterans up front are Richer in his eighth year, Vogler, the ninth-year right guard, and Joe Devlin, who is the dean. He's the right tackle in his 11th season. Kelly actually had 4.9 seconds to get that ball off, and Richards, I'm sure, would like to say to him, hey, big guy, get rid of it. You're putting too much pressure on us against this great wall that the Redskins have. Especially when you got Manley and Mann huh. trying to get to that quarterback. They wouldn't have to tell me but one time, hey, get rid of it, Brad, no problem. <laughs> First down and 20. Back at Connection. Andre Reed was the intended receiver. Darrell Green, the closest player to that ball. There are a lot of pressures to put on a quarterback, Dick, that forces him to make an incompletion. You can knock the ball down. You can you can have good coverage. That time, Kelly had time. Reed had come across the middle. He was open. But the pressure from the defensive end with his hands up in his face forced him to throw the ball high over his head. Well, you saw, talked to Kelly yesterday, who was a native of the uh, suburb of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm He's not going to tell anyone who his favorite quarterback was. Well, I'll tell him. <laughs> Well, you guys are same size. You were ahead of him, though. You were a pioneer. Second and 20. And the pass open is Reed. He's got it. And Andre Reed with a big play. Three coming down the field. Notice he's looking. He's looking back at Kelly. He slows down and allows a lane to create for Kelly himself. Kelly sees it, lays it up, and gets the first down. Now, as a quarterback, you have to show lots of poise. As you can see, Butts coming around. Man, 71 to the outside. As he comes inside, Kelly, right at the very last, little bump in the back. And down is Andre Reed. He was hit by Coleman and Wilburn, two pretty good hitters in the Redskin defense. Reed today has already caught three passes for 45 yards, and he's awfully strong. The Bills were telling us that he's a pretty good uh, weightlifter. All of these kids, Reed, Vince Press is 350 pounds, along with Burkhead, 85, his partner on the other side. The thing they do well is they have a lot of strength, and the receivers as well as the quarterback, when they lead the line of scrimmage, their responsibility is to read the safety, read the safety. Now, here's the hit. Reed makes the catch, goes down inside. Like the arms underneath him. Looks fine to me. Nothing wrong with that. Need to lift maybe just a few more weights. Appears all right. Andre Reed with his biggest catch of this season. And a first and ten at the Redskins 17. Trumaine Johnson. Acquired from San Diego. Man that the Bills really want to get the ball to. Number 86 replaces Reed. Kelly up the middle. Hits his tight end Metzelars and... Let's see where his forward progress goes. Alvin Walton, the strong safety, came up, and they stopped Metzelars just shy of the 15-yard line, just a gain of a couple there. Metzelars coming over to Buffalo from Seattle in a trade, and no one has really heard a lot about number 88, but when you have a quarterback like Kelly, an average receiver, an average receiver all of a sudden piles up big numbers. This guy, for a tight end, 46 receptions last year. Pretty good. Andre Reed back in. see what the officials call and it's recovered by Buffalo it appears we'll wait this is the can't really tell but now you can see both linebacks see Bowles 23 coming up inside Todd Bowles the free safety blitzing and Malott 57 coming from the outside blitzing the thing that made it effective was the fact that that the three Manley Grant and Butts both got down inside in the Washington Redskin version of the Bear 46. 
Now you can see number 57 right coming up the middle. Malott comes up here. Bowles comes up here. And look at the tackle. 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 In. Down inside. Now we roll. There's the blitz right up inside. No one picks up Malott. Vogler picked up the ball, though, and it's uh, still Buffalo possession. Third down and 18, loss of 11. And Kelly's pass is intercepted by Monty Coleman. Coleman to the 25, to the 30, and Coleman brings it back shy of the 35-yard line before Jim Richer makes the tackle. A 27-yard return and an interception by Monty Coleman. Seventh interception by Washington. Credit Dexter Manley, but getting inside and getting his arms around Kelly that time and not allowing him to stride and throw the football properly, forcing an underthrow, and Coleman, 51, standing right there, makes a fine interception as he reached in behind him to snag the football. And that is his third NFL interception. So Jim Kelly throws it away, and now the Redskins. First and 10 on their 35-yard line. and brings it out to the 40. A pickup of five yards that time. Tackle made by Darrell Talley and Eugene Marr. Cornelius Bennett, who, of course, came to Buffalo, and they expect that he'll be used as an outside linebacker on the left side. They love Shane Conlon, who's been playing outside. They may move him inside. And so when you look at Bennett and Talley, the two outside backers, Conlon and Drew Smith inside, they've got pretty good weapons on the bench. The Redskins dictating this game. Second down and five at the 40. And on the reverse, there goes Art Monk. First down and more. Art Monk in the Buffalo territory and ridden out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Mark Kelso made the stop. Another good block by Don Warren, and Monk picked up 26 yards that time. That's the same play, the same action that time by Warren, 85, the time in. The play before he came in motion, and they ran, gave the ball to Rodgers. Same motion. Warren comes inside, fake to Rodgers, and then turn around and hand to Monk on a reverse with Warren getting a fine block downfield, along with number 83, Ricky Sanders. So Monk now on two reverses has picked up 26 this time and 16 yards on the initial play of the ball game. And the Redskins in business, first and ten at the Bills 34, and Rodgers is stopped from behind by Shane Conlon. We've just been talking about the number one draft pick out of Penn State, Conlon, and he made a good play there. Well, Conlon's a kid that they like a lot. He's smart, he's strong, he's heady, and they were going to move him inside. He's a little, came on a little bit slow, Dick, during preseason training camp, but he's come back and they feel like, boy, well, now with him moving inside and with Cornelius Bennett, boy, they can put pressure on both sides of, the line, of, the, of their defensive side. Second and nine, Kelvin Bryant in for the Redskins. Washington at the 33-yard line of Buffalo. Raiders pass caught by Monk. Good catch on a low toss behind him. And he stopped at the 25-yard line. Gain of eight. Burrows and Talley make the tackle and shy of a first down by about a yard. All the motion that Gibbs is putting in his offense, taking all the, taking both the outside linebackers and the corners away from him, and then bringing his slot receivers inside and isolating them and forcing Schrader. And this is interesting. He's forcing Schrader to throw the football short, which is something he doesn't do well. Reggie Brands, good short yardage back. Rodgers and cut him off at the pass. You're going to see at the top of your screen coming inside penetration. Outside, there's another man penetration. These linemen are unable to hook these guys and tally 56 will simply just blitz, come to the outside and no one there to make the stop. Up inside, you see him? Gets his arms on Rodgers' legs and just knocks him down. And we were just talking about Branch. He missed the block right there and Tally came storming in. In a blitzing linebacker, not so much here. Ali Hajiji will attempt a 44-yard kick. And now coming into the game is Raleigh McKenzie at the last moment. 44-yard attempt. Hajiji has already made good from 30. Rough 
tripping or running into the kicker penalty. And the Bills, Brett Smurlis is quite animated out there. And that will give the Redskins a light. Well, let's look at it. It's the kick. There's a miss. Now, we're, there's Smurlis coming up inside late. Of course, as you can see, the ball has already been kicked. First of all, foul, running into the kicker, number 76, first down. Fred Smurlis, longtime veteran from Boston College, was the second man in there. First guy was Tasker. He got the job done. The kick was off to the right, and Smurlis now with his appeal to Jerry Markbright. Actually, Smurlis did not hit him when he went after the ball. When he rolled over, he, he got him. They may be looking at a videotape replay right now. Nick Scorich from the league office is the man at the screens today here at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. Let's take a look again. You're going to see Tasker, number 89, coming from the outside first. Now, he'll lunge first, and he'll miss the kick. Smurlis comes up, comes up from the inside, falls down, rolls over, and then body slams. <laughs> I see she just body slams him. So looking at this, you'd have to say it's a penalty. Well, Joe Gibbs has been legislating all season for officials to call more penalties for running into the kicker. Jess Atkinson, his opening day kicker, got hurl hurt earlier. And so uh, he feels strongly about it, does Gibbs. And let's see what, what the videotape shows. What the refs are doing, they're looking to find out if indeed the football was touched. Play stands and the penalty counts. Yes. If, if Tasker's had indeed touched the football, then that nullifies the kicker. He's free now to be hit by anyone, and Smurlis would have gotten away with that. But they looked at the replay, decided that it, the ball was not touched, therefore Smurlis is guilty of the infraction. Very costly penalty against the Bills. It's the first down for the Redskins. after that penalty. One of the best defensive tackles I'd ever played against. Smurlis going to the nose tackle out of Boston. Just extremely strong and for a nose tackle you can look at the arms and the body and generally if you look at the eyes of a nose tackle you get the impression they don't really like life too well. <laughs> well Walt Corey the defensive coordinator says that Smurlis who he loves and respects he says he kids him he doesn't get enough sacks he says he's a great squeezer he keeps running in place. <laughs> what he said about Inside the 15-yard line. It'll be third and short for the Redskins. Darrell Talley and Ron Pitts combined on that stop. Brian had a big game as a pass receiver against the Jets. Four catches and a touchdown. The question is, can they keep him healthy? That's been the big puzzle for the Redskins since he's been there in a couple of years. Washington uses Bryant like they use Joe's, Joe Washington. He's not going to see a lot of action. 10, 15 plays a game. But even they have not been able to use him that much because of injury. Third and one, Reggie Grant, the short yardage man, is in there. And now the Redskins want to talk it over and call a timeout. With seven minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first half, crowd has been quiet because the Redskins lead by 10. Lead and threatening here. The Redskins have been keeping the ball on the ground the way they wanted to. Haji Sheik has a field goal, and Bryant caught a touchdown pass from Jay Schrader. That's the story here. Now it's third and one at the Buffalo 13-yard line. And play action and a bootleg. Schrader will go in and score for the Redskins. We have seen a lot of razzle-dazzle this first half from the Redskins. Two reverses that have worked and now a 13-yard bootleg, a naked reverse, if you will, and Schrader gives the Redskins a 16-0 lead. 
Williams is told Schrader, everyone's chasing him. Everyone's chasing down inside. There's no support to the outside. Comes out, fakes to Rogers in the eye back, and then, of course, you can see there, everyone collapses inside, and Schrader's wide open for the touchdown. Excellent call. And now, Ali Hajishik didn't add the 17th point for the Redskins. He does, and with 7.06 remaining, this crowd has had a lot to cheer about in recent weeks. Marv Levy's club with a couple of wins. Cornelius Bennett signed. Today, though, so far, another story. It is now 17 to nothing. The Redskins lead the Buffalo Bills, and a lot of people, as you look at the scoring drive, may say that the Bills have the Redskins where they want them. They were down with 21 nothing to the Miami Dolphins last week. In line. Won that game in overtime. Did the same thing against the Houston Oilers before the strike. Cox kicking off into the end zone, and it's Riddick who's down it there for a touchback. And right now, for an NFL Today report, let's check in with our good friend Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Well, Dick, the Philadelphia Eagles got immediate help from Chris Carter, activated today for this game. He left Ohio State early, went in the supplemental draft. The Eagles kicked the extra point. They lead the Cardinals by 1-7-6. Back to Dick. All right, Brent, thank you very much. And, of course, the Eagles trying to get to 3-4. and four. Play the Redskins next week at Veterans Stadium. Meanwhile, the Bills first and 10 on the 20. And here's Rob Riddick slicing off tackle. And Riddick to the 24-yard line. Mel Kaufman making the tackle on Riddick, who has scored seven touchdowns this year. Tops in the league. You want to keep the ball on the ground and control the ball, just do what the Redskins have done. Second down and six. Again, it's Riddick, and Riddick finds the hole. Brings it out to the 36, a first down, and a pickup of 12. Rebound bowl on the stop. Riddick coming out. Riddick is the back that they like to put in there last week, 69 yards against the Dolphins. A no-nonsense back, just straight ahead, lots of quickness. Kelly says he hits the line of scrimmage quicker than any back we have. Gets the quick start and against the Redskins, gets a little block, and then boom, he's right through there. Riddick is teamed with the rookie, Jamie Mueller, a surprise in camp in the backfield, but Riddick gets the call again. And a tremendous hit by Alvin Walton knocks Riddick out of bounds the 35. Alvin Walton, who made 12 tackles against the Jets, has been nothing but a ferocious hitter since winning a job at strong safety coming out of Kansas. Riddick leads the NFL in scoring. 42 points. Just five touchdowns in his previous four-year career. Already has seven. Second down and 11 at the 35. Six minutes remaining in the first half. Kelly getting a rush from Manley and an incompleted pass. It is ruled an incompleted pass, and Kelly got hit, and Manley off to a great start, got a good first step. They're taking Manley out wider this week, trying to get him involved in the defense. Setups inside, comes around his man. Puts him down. Another pressure on Kelly. Hits his arm as while well. he's throwing it. So Manley, by getting wider this week, he said, I'm going to get wider. That enables me to take that tackle out wide, and I can either go outside or inside. I'm come after it. I'm Manny beat with Leonard Burton in the second year from South Carolina, who had replaced Will Wolford, who was shaken up. So now Jim Kelly faced with third and 11 on his own 35-yard line. Here comes Manley again, and the pass is incomplete. Burkett, the intended receiver in Wilburn, was covering. And it'll be fourth down. But there was Manley storming in once more. Making his presence fell, but as you could tell, the route had to be deep. And Burkett went down, came inside, beat Wilburn to the inside. The ball slightly thrown behind Burkett, allowed Wilburn to come in, get a hand on the ball, and knock it down. There's Eric Yarber. He's back for the Redskins. John Kidd back at the 20, punting for Buffalo. Yarber at the 23. And that's all. Gets to the 31-yard line, and the Redskins will go on offense again. 
Roland Mitchell made the stop. So Washington takes over. There's the story in the second quarter. It's been the Redskins on the ground and defensively. Lettuce and tomatoes are very delicate. If they could win. Here it is. We're going to hear it. We're not going to talk and see if we can pick up a whistle. Here's the play. Well, I didn't hear a whistle. There might have been one, but I didn't hear one. So we'll have to see what Nick Storage has ruled upstairs. After Phil Hill the play stands. How can you call that not a fumble when it was a not in the grasp rule? He hit him flying across the air. There's no way that could have not have been a fumble. And they're going to look again, yeah. and they should look again. Officials time out. Now we have the, maybe we have the two minute warning now. Two minutes remain. I think they want to examine the clock. Two minute warning. Two minute warning. Our two-minute warning is upon us. That'll give the crowd more of a chance to shout their displeasure out on the field. Redskins keep the ball. They'll punt, and we'll be back. Rich Stadium, and Steve Cox is in to punt for the Washington Redskins after the officials reviewed the videotape replay and decided that the call stands and that Jay Schrader was in the grass of Dwight Drain. Ron Pitts goes back. of the ball. It's blocked and now takes a Washington bounce and it will be down inside the 20 yard line. Let's take another look. Was he or was he not Schrader caught in the grass? I find it hard to believe that Dwight Drain 45 coming in from the left of your screen has Schrader in the grass. In the grass is one thing but hitting him going full speed is another. There's the hit. That is not in the grass. That ball has popped out. My friends, that's a fumble. Every, every league I've ever played in, that's a fumble. And sometimes referees have to make decisions that are the right decisions. And that is clearly a fumble. Look that way. First and 10 bills on their 21-yard line. Penalty marker down, and the pass is caught by Chris Burkett. Out of bounds. A first down at the 37-yard line, a gain of 16. And here's a flag. It appears to be against Buffalo. We'll wait. And now it's against Washington. Dexter Manley with a word for Mark Price. Well, that's nice. Five yards for one. Uh, the, the Redskins will take a five-yard penalty and as long as they can take the seven points off the board, which is exactly what Buffalo should have gotten out of that. That was a big call considering the complexion of this game. And it appeared to be a fumble without question here. First and 10 at the 36. The pass caught. Andre Reed. The ticket, Ronnie Harmon. And Harmon, who caught a pass earlier for 42 yards, stops the clock with 136 remaining. And... The Bills now at the 44-yard line. Second down and a short two coming up for the Bills. Coming up at halftime, the NFL today, Brent Nerv scores and highlights of games around the league. This is the seventh weekend. Second and two, Kelly. And a receiver has fallen down or cut not made, Trumaine Johnson, who's just learning the Bills offense was the intended receiver there and Coleman put pressure on Kelly. Tremaine Johnson goes going down the field as you can tell. They're wanting to get the football to him He's a great threat to them. They feel they've got to get the football to him takes his man inside then turns around to the outside and the ball ends about 10 yards short of him. So either Kelly misread it or Tremaine ran the wrong route. The Bills are 0 for 5 on third down conversions. They need two yards. Pressure on Kelly. And the pass is intercepted by Barry Wilburn. And the Redskins snuff that out. And for Wilburn, that is his fourth interception of the season. 
And Kelly throws it into the hands of Wilburn, and that will end that threat. You can, Jim's mad. You can, well, he should be mad. This is a poorly thrown football. When you throw deep sidelines, you have to bring the receiver back at least five yards. Jim throws it right at him instead of bringing him back, and therefore the ball is underthrown, allowing Barry Wolburn, 45, to make the interception. That ball has to leave because it's a long way it has to travel, so you have to get rid of it a lot sooner than that. So now the Redskins leading 17 to nothing. On the first and 10 on their own 45, 1.26 remaining and two timeouts left. it off to Kelvin Bryant. Penalty marker down. Bryant gets in the Bills territory before he is brought down at the 42 by Eugene Marr. As Kelly waits for another opportunity. And a flag again. That one against the Redskins. Who is the use of the body? Tripping number 73 offense. Mark May, the right tackle. A lot of times a tackle when he is beaten by a defensive end, when he's on the ground, will just take his legs and stick them out and trip the guy as he goes by to prevent his quarterback from getting the sack. Redskins leading 17 to nothing. Buffalo with a couple of turnovers. Fumble and interception. And the Redskins get an edge there. They're nearly unbeatable. So it's first and 20 for the Skins on their own 35, 118 on the clock. First half, Bryant trying to cut in, and Bruce Smith is there. Haven't seen much of Bruce Smith in the plays so far, but he leads the team in sacks, and he's really one to watch. But he is a person, number 78, as you look on your screen, he's the guy that they're so concerned about that we've seen two reverses his way, meaning that he's chasing, so they're coming back with reverses. Also, we've seen him take Warren, number 85, the tight end, and place him over Smith, giving Jacoby help, and had, he's had two guys on him all day long. Jacoby might be enough. Second and 22. He's a guy in the half himself. <laughs> They dump it off to Bryan again to the left side, and Kelvin slips and is down at the 33-yard line by Darrell Talley and Eugene Marv, and the clock is running. Redskins, two timeouts left. The Bills haven't used up any of theirs. I don't understand why Bryan went down. I guess this, op this drive is designed to kill the clock and not move the football because Bryan should have gone out of bounds and stopped the clock. A timeout has been called by the Buffalo Bills. And while we have a moment, we want to tell you what we have in store for you next Saturday. CBS Sports presents more great college football action. Fourth-ranked Florida State <laughs> takes on sixth-ranked Auburn. What a game, huh? That'll have a big impact on the major bowl bid. Top 10 collision next Saturday, live at 2.30 Eastern right here on CBS Sports. 73 points Florida State scores last week against Tulane Green Wave. Ought to be a dandy. Auburn 7-0-1, Florida State 71. Auburn beats Florida yeah, yesterday, so a classic match of two big powerhouses in the South. I tried to go to Florida State out of high school. You probably wanted to know that. Well, I'm interested to know. Why didn't you? I left school. I quit at Louisiana Tech. Drove all the way to Florida State without anyone giving me any assistance. I got there. I called up Bill Peterson and said, I want to come here and play. And he said, you get out of here. And I went back home. Assistance team. No one gave you a lift? No one gave me any. <laughs> right, no one gave me any money. Third down at 22. And they want to use up the clock. Kelvin Bryant gets a hole. And Bryant is finally brought down by his foot and dragged a little bit at the 46-yard line. 18 seconds remain and a timeout called by the Bills, and we'll be back. <laughs> there are facts about quality pens off the pick from the 32. Well, George Allen, if he's watching this game, has to be very pleased with his pupil and the fine job he's doing here. Then. They got 10 men on the line Do the Bills. They're going after Cox here. It's a low stop, and he gets the kick away as the Redskins block effectively. And the ball will go out of bounds at around the 10-yard line with 11 seconds on the clock. A 43-yard kick by Cox. And the Bills wanting to get a piece of it. Well, this is just the first half for most of you of CBS doubleheader today. Game two, the Minnesota Vikings 
who have been perfect when their regulars have been in there against the Seattle Seahawks. Chuck Knox's club, always a contender for AFC honors. Some of you will see Detroit and Denver. Check your local listing. Minnesota, Seattle, good battle in the Dome. Two Domers, huh? Going after it. Another interconference game. Both of them are. This one is. 11 seconds to go, and Bill's not taking any chances. Well, the crowd won't like that call in which they ruled that Schrader was in, was down, instead of a fumble and a touchdown. The Bills on the, not yet on the board, and the first half ends with the score, the Washington Redskins 17, and the Buffalo Bills nothing in this battle of divisional leaders in the NFC East with the Redskins and the Bills in the AFC East. So that is the end of the first half with the score, the Redskins 17, and the Bills nothing. To nothing. The Redskins lead the Bills at halftime, and uh, Terry Bradshaw, I'd have to say that Joe Gibbs couldn't have written a better script because his team is getting that balance offensively. They're keeping the ball on the ground, and they are controlling the ball, which is what Gibbs wants the most, and the result is a 17-0 lead. For the key, by keeping it on the ground, it establishes confidence once again on behalf of the Washington Redskins, and in turn keeps Jim Kelly and his explosive offense off the football field. Speaking of Jim Kelly, what do you prescribe if you were the doctor for the Bills in the second half? Uh, and looking at the stats from halftime, one thing that really stood out was third down conversions, and they're 0 for 6, and unless you convert those, there are no sustaining drives, so you, they've got to improve on third down, and I think for the most part, they're going to get away from their running, at, running game because in the second half, the Bills with Kelly have been a come back team. Speaking of the running game, the Redskins, of course, getting a lot of mileage out of George Rogers, who in the first half gained 84 yards, and they used both Rogers and Kelvin Bryan, and there was one play in particular that may have been uh, really the prototype of what the Redskins did. Well, I want to show you what they do. It's called counter tray, where Rogers, or in this case, Bryan, will step this way, come back, grim the center, will block back, Jacoby sets, pulls, and cuts inside, and then Rakenzie sets, pulls, he leads out, and then you'll see Monk come across, and he will seal backside. It's called counter Troy, or the opposing teams call it the bullets play, and it is, this has been the most successful play so far for the Redskins. Notice Monk, 81, he's across. Now he's looking inside to seal off any pressure. Jacoby pulls up, McKenzie pulls up, Russ Grimm blocks back, and a fine job there by Bryant picking the hole. And of course, the Redskins have been outstanding defensively so far. They have just stopped the run totally. And Joe Gibbs looking at the play sheet. That's Mark Rippon, who is the quarter young quarterback who's not active, who they have a lot of hopes for. Look at the rushing edge, 163 to 16. Two turnovers, both interceptions, by the way, by Wilburn and Monty Coleman by the Redskins. And uh, also the Bills have been penalized more. Interesting on that controversial call and we'll call it controversial uh, in the grasp or not McNanny thought he had run for a touchdown and uh, even in talking with Bobby Beathard the general manager during halftime of the Redskins he thought it also was a fumble. Well I think that's pretty much the consensus especially here in Buffalo but even those from Washington and I'm sure our viewing audience is going to agree that it was indeed a fumble. On the kickoff the Bills having problems and Jamie Mueller finally picks it up and that's not the way you want to come out in the second half if you're Marv Levy. Reggie Branch made the tackle, and so Jim Kelly will go to work, and go to work he did last week against the Miami Dolphins. Actually, at one point, it was 21-0, and he brought the team back, and he has another uphill climb here. Second half comebacks are nothing unusual for Kelly or for Schrader. You build a reputation by bringing your team back to victory in the second half after trailing. It's one thing to trail four points, five points, but to be down 21 points like they were last week against Miami and overcome that for an overtime victory says a lot to Kelly and his offense. That's Jamie Mueller, who was shaken up. Here's the, uh, the way it ended. He took quite a hit. Mueller fumbling the kickoff, picks it up, gets outside, and Vernon Dean, 32, puts his helmet square on the helmet of Jamie Mueller, 39, and trying to get the cobwebs out. As he's obviously stunned by that, by that shot by Dean. And he's still on the field, and that's why we can't get underway. The Bills are backed up to their own 13-yard line. Look at his eyes. You can always look at a guy's eyes when he's really been, really been dinged. 
The eyes kind of look wild and glassy and telling everybody he's all right, he's all right. Where are you? They always ask these questions. What's your name? Where are you? How old you are? He was a surprise to make the ball club a third round pick out of Benedictine College in Atchison, Kansas, an NAIA school. So he's on the sidelines, and Jim Kelly goes to work first and 10 for the Bills on their own 13-yard line. Rob Riddick goes in motion. And the first pass is caught out of the back. Andre Reed makes the reception. Short gain to the 16, 17-yard line. Darrell Green makes the stop. Kelly in the first half completed 9 of 18 for 142 yards and two interceptions. Second down and six at the 17. And Riddick runs right into Dave Butts, who looks like he's all right. I find it very difficult to understand why Butts, why they would want to go up inside on Butts and Grant, two of the biggest guys going against two, Richer and, and Vogler, the two guards. Penalty against Charles Mann on the play, however. Offsides called against Charles Mann. I wouldn't want to run against that line anywhere, actually. And or tackle. Well, no, and if you're going to go up inside, the best way to do it is not to zone block man on man. The best way to do it is to trap, pull guys, slap them, and go up inside. Second and one, and Kelly with a play action. He goes up on top, and the pass is intercepted by Todd Bowles. Bowles with the third interception of the game by the Redskins, runs it back into Bill territory at the 41 yard line. And for Todd Bowles, his second interception of the game. Pass intended for Chris Burkett. Good play by Bowles. The key for Kelly as a quarterback when you're throwing deep down the left side as Bowles 23 is inside is to take him out of it with your eyes. Look him off. Pump. Do anything to freeze a free safety. Not allow him to get the jump on your receivers. That time Kelly did a poor job of that in playing free safety. Bowles read his eyes, made the adjustment, made the interception. So that's the third turnover, all interception throw by Jim Kelly, and it's first and 10 for the Redskins at the Buffalo 41. Redskins leading 17 to nothing early in the third. Rogers. They had Warren blocking, but the Bills stopped him, and Eugene Marv making the tackle for the Bills. 52 and 3, that's what the Redskins have been in the last five years when they've been in front at halftime. Offensive line, May, Thielman, Grimm, McKenzie, and Jacoby. Grimm, of course, moving to center, replacing Bostic, and McKenzie getting the starting chance at left guard this year. Second and ten. Raiders pass is caught by Clark at the 20. Fine catch. Nate Odoms on the stop and a 21-yard pickup for Gary Clark, who's the leading receiver coming in for the skin. Well, the respect that Odoms this time has for Clark is evidence. As you can tell, he's seven yards off of him. It's a zone, and you can see Clark coming down, makes a move to the post, and comes back inside. But the inexperience of Odoms, 37, not to react after the final move by Clark cost him. Odoms out of Wisconsin, taken on the second round. Clark had caught one for 51 yards earlier in the game. So it's the first and 10 Redskins on the Bills 20. On the run, Trader with a running pass. It's caught by Monk and out of bounds at the 14, gain of six. Again, it was Nate Odoms on the coverage. The thing that's curious is, as you see, Monk go in motion, is all the multiple motions that were set up for a six-yard pass. Monk inside checks it. Are you coming? Back to the left, then back to the right, then the snap, and very simply, he goes outside in the flat for a six-yard pass. All of that for six yards. Maybe setting something up here. Hope he's in shape. <laughs> Second down three at the 13 of the Bills. Rodgers off left tackle, runs into a wall and dives forward to about the 10-yard line. 
Darrell Talley making the stop. The Bills trying to stop the Redskins once again. Buffalo's problems have been on defense this year. Got a couple of blue chippers and Bruce Smith and Conlon and Talley and Odom. Bennett coming aboard, but the Redskins have really dominated this game. Third and one. Branching. Short yardage. Blocking in front of Rodgers. Rodgers with Grant blocking and George will have another first down for the Redskins about the eight yard line first and goal coming up now for Washington Gibbs has to be pleased with the effort that Rodgers has given him you know one of the things Gibbs said was that I don't want him 90 percent I want him 100 percent because if he's 90 percent he can get hurt again and be 60 percent and possibly miss the whole season I want him 100 percent for him to be effective and for us to continue to use him he's not we're not going to play him He's 11 yards away from a 100-yard gain, and it's first and goal at the eight. Four minutes gone by here in the third quarter at Rich Stadium. An awfully quiet place with a lot of people. Rodgers going wide, and Sean McManney grabs him and brings him down. Gain of about a yard, and that's all, so it's second down and goal. Nothing fancy with that play as McNanny, 95 defensive left end, simply beats Mark May, does not allow Rodgers outside, and comes back in and makes the tackle. Has a rotator cuff injury, Dick, that is, they really were concerned about. He only practiced Thursday, I believe it was, and just for a little bit. He was questionable coming into this ball game, but here he is. Kelvin Bryant coming in now, second down and goal at the seven. A lot of options for Schrader here with a lot of receivers. They put pressure on Schrader and he dumps it off to Bryant. And there Bryant does the rest and goes in for his second touchdown of the ball game. Ron Pitts missed the tackle on Kelvin Bryant. Who goes in and the Redskins raise their lead to 23 to nothing. Shane Conlon, 58, will be the linebacker that's going to get into Schrader's face. But Schrader's 6'4 and a big, strong quarterback. And I tell you, this is a fine job by him as he just barely gets, Conlon gets his hands on him, but Schrader pushes him to the ground. As you can see, Bryant pushes Pitts to the ground, back inside against the grain and, and gets the touchdown. Ali Haji Sheik, who started the scoring today for the Redskins with a 30-yard field goal, adds the 24th point. And so if you like Jim Kelly's comebacks, if you're a Buffalo fan, he's going to have to bring him way back now. He'll return. A block on Conlon, allow him to come in to Schrader. Now he's saying to Schrader, I think what on that, he's saying to Schrader, now you take Conlon because you're a big old strong moose and I'm a little bitty back and I'm going to go outside here and I'm going to watch all this happen. And then after you just about get sacked and push him down, I'll catch the pass for a touchdown. Kelly, first and 10 on the 26 on the run, incomplete. Darrell Green is covering on the play, and the intended receiver was Andre Reed. Kelly, by the way, has completed only three of his last ten passes with three interceptions, so he is in a slump right now. Well, they're mixing the coverages up on him, Dick. That'll help. He's confusing him. Blitz here, blitz there, zone here. He's, he doesn't exactly understand what's going to happen on each play. And 10. Kelly and Harmon defended by Mel Kaufman. Crowd thought Kaufman was too much in his face, but it was a good play by Mel Kaufman. Let's take a look at how the Bills have gone offensively today. And of course, just take a look at where they have started. They have, other than the midfield, first quarter possession they have started on their 20 or inside on every occasion tough to win that one well it sure is you, you can't expect them to go 80 yards every time they have the ball third and 10 Burkett makes the catch and that'll be shy of a first down Barry Wilburn was right with him and Burkett has stopped at the 31 yard line so it'll be fourth down 
And Kidd will come in and kick it away and shake it up for the moment. You see is Chris Burkett. He caught nine last week. Has two so far today. Eric Yarber goes back for the Redskins. Third quarter, the Redskins have held the Bills at bay. Penny marker down. John Kidd's punt will be down by the Bills. Hasker downs it at the 34-yard line, but there was a flag. Kick went 35 yards. And it's against the Buffalo Bills. Well, this crowd was at a fevered pitch when they started today. Three and three, tied for the lead in the AFC Eastern Division. The Eagle Foundation, number 40, not on the line of scrimmage. Penalty declined. First down. That was Rob Riddick, and so the Redskins will take over. They declined the penalty, and a timeout at Rich Stadium where things haven't gone very well for the Bills today. Nick Stockton and Terry Bradshaw, that's the time remaining in the third quarter. The Redskins way ahead of the Bills, 24-0, and have the ball in Buffalo territory, on their own territory, I should say, 34-yard line, first and 10. Rodgers, and George Rodgers gets tripped up at the 37 by Ray Bentley. The Redskins getting an answer to their running game today. And Bentley on the stop. So Jay Schrader, who came on strong against the Jets late in the game. Conservative ball control style today. Some big ones, bro. Some big ones, but it's all by design. Gibbs is trying to get him to settle down and get him into the flow of the game and get him back. Second and six after 38. Schrader, the monk. Hard tackle right there by Derek Burroughs. You got to really feel for Monk and Clark. When they run those little four-yard hitches, Jay Schrader can put more, more steam on a pass than any quarterback I've ever seen since Bird Jones. Speaking of Bird Jones, he really can gun that thing. Schrader has completed his last five passes. He was three for three on that last drive. He has... Pass for two touchdowns and run for one this afternoon. First and ten on the Washington 45-yard line. And they give it to Rodgers, and Rodgers gets just the full field. It will be second and five. Darrell Talley on the stop. Keith Griffin has been really the key ball carrier while Gibbs was waiting for Rodgers and Bryant to get healthy. And Perhaps this could be a sign that the Redskins running attack is back to where Gibbs wants it. And right now, Rogers right on the threshold of a 100-yard gain. He has 99 and 23 carries. Second down and five. Just under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. And Rogers goes over 100 and... He is shy of a first down, however, is stopped at the 46-yard line. Jim Kelly with a rugged afternoon today. Terry mentioned having problem reading the coverages by the Redskins. He has thrown three interceptions. So Rogers now is over 100 yards, and the Redskins have won 33 straight games when a running back has gone over 100 yards. Back in a big way to this. Playing strong line, the back, straighter, everyone involved with the Redskins. And this game has played extremely well. Third and one, and Rogers with the first down and out of bounds at the 40 by Derek Burroughs. So this is textbook football run by the Washington Redskins. And right now for an NFL Today report, here is Brent Musburger. Brent? Dick, we got a quarterback who's starting to mature in the NFL. He's with the Philadelphia Eagles. Randall Cunningham off the play fake, sprints to the left, throws hard to the right. Kenny Jackson beats the secondary. 70-yard touchdown, 21-6 Eagles. Back to Dick. All right, Brent, and that's what the Redskins are going to have to face next week. Randall Cunningham airing it out today. 
as those two teams are playing Philadelphia next week. First and ten for the Redskins on the Buffalo 40, and Keith Griffin carries for the first time. And Griffin picks up five yards. So Rogers getting a rest right now after going, going over 100. Ron Pitts made the stop on Keith Griffin. We want to remind you, we've got a dandy coming up next. Most of you will see the Minnesota Vikings against the Seattle Seahawks. Detroit and Denver from some of you. A couple of tough intersectional battles. Denver real strong. Denver struggling. Detroit struggling. And Darrell Rogers may be in trouble in Detroit. It might be. Might. They've got that young quarterback there. No buddy of mine, Joe Ferguson, might have to come off the bench and win one for him. He was here. You bet. Second and five. That's the 35. And on the reverse, guess who? Art Monk. For the third time in the ball game, and Monk... The first down at the 23, a pickup of 12. Three reverses to Art Monk today for a total of 54 yards. Unbelievable. Very seldom do you continue with a gadget play. You run it once, then you put it away. They, they've run this reverse three times, twice to Smith's side. This time they come back to McNanny. Look at 58, Colin. He goes inside, gets clipped, gets, gets his legs chopped out for him. But three times on reverses, unheard of. And one season, Art Monk was indeed a running back to Syracuse. First and ten at the 23 of Buffalo. Griffin. Penalty marker down inside the 20. Stopped by Shane Conlon. And Griffin carry. When you got things going your way, and this one will be against Washington, uh, you can run the ball to your heart's content, and that's what a lot of clubs have done. They build up the big lead early and then just use up the clock. This is Washington football. Run, run, run. Hey, hey. Under 68. Offense. First down. Russ Grimm holding. Dick Stockton and Terry Bradshaw. The Washington Redskins coming in a rich stadium with a big crowd on hand and a lot of momentum for the Bills. Three and three, including two straight overtime wins over the likes of the Giants and the Dolphins. Dolphins on the road, and the Redskins have shown why they are one of the top teams in the NFL with a five and one mark, and it's a 24 to nothing game. Right here, first and 20, back to the 33. Kelvin Bryant is checked in. Bryant gets the call, spins his way, Kelvin Bryant with a tremendous whirling dervish foray. Stopped by Bruce Smith, but picks up 15 yards. And that's what they bought when they got him from his USFL career. Well, there are great paintings. They're great painters. Picasso, you got all these great, whatever's great, but the Bryant run right there, there's no description. Just let it run. You watch and see a great athlete show what he can do. It does speak for itself. Darrell Talley has been helped off the field for the Buffalo Bills. A very fine outside linebacker. Well, the Redskins have certainly upgraded their running game. Second and five at the 18-yard line of Buffalo. Winding down to four minutes remaining in this third quarter. go outside by Lawrence Jock Johnson. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Buffalo Bills and the National Football League is prohibited. Joe Gibbs coming in with the best road record in the NFL in the last five years and Nothing changing as far as the Redskins are concerned, or their domination over AFC teams. Turn. They won 11 of their last 12 against the American Football Conference. Third down and seven. Later, they'll run it and wisely slide down at about the 15-yard line. He is short by about a yard and a half. Well, he knows how to slide. He got that from his baseball right. experience, and probably the only thing he brought over from baseball was his slide technique, which I was very impressed with right there. <laughs> the arm he's always had. 
Interesting guy. Strader is he's a free spirit from California. Look at this. He's competitive. He's in there. He's got him a restaurant now. He's finally got him a restaurant. When you become all pro, you go out and you get you a little restaurant. Went to, he said, I'm going to name it Jay's Place. Nice, quiet, little California name. And then when he came out, it was Jay's All Pro Quarterback Restaurant. All he needs now is to become all pro. He hasn't been yet. This will be a 33-yard attempt by Haji Sheik, who was successful on a 30-yarder early in the game, and this kick is good. So a 33-yard field goal by Ali Haji Sheik just adds to the woes of the Bills and puts the Redskins in great shape some more. 27-0. Stadium in Buffalo, and Steve Cox will kick off for the Redskins who now lead it by a score of 27-0. Rob Riddick is the deep man. Ali Hajishik has kicked two field goals today. Schrader has figured all the rest of the score. This is taken by Tasker. And Tasker written at a tackle at the 23-yard line by Reggie Branch. Well, the Bills have been in postseason play on four occasions. Let's go back if we might through the first time that was in 1964 since the merger and guess who the bills had to play you got it <laughs> terry oh, Bradshaw that is cold-blooded who did that Steelers, and that's lynn <laughs> swan look at that pass thread the needle in the 74 playoffs and now a touchdown throw to rocky flyer 27 yards for the score and the steelers beat the bills 32 to 14 terry you know you look uh, just the same you, you know, know what i wonder why they called me dumb after looking at that shot <laughs> Ronnie Harmon. <laughs> Ronnie Harmon. Now take a look at this boy. Oh, yeah, look at this. Doesn't he look terrific now? <laughs> I got my teeth fixed. Yeah. I'm losing my hair. <laughs> I'm still working on my southern voice. <laughs> That's right. You keep working on it. Harmon on the reception. And this pass is caught by Trumaine Johnson. I will get even. I don't know who did this, but look at this guy. Can you believe that? <laughs> you know what? I think you scared the Bills even before the game was played. Oh, that look. Man. That's under. That's embarrassing. Why do y'all do me like that? Hurry up offense by the Bills who need a lot of points in a hurry. The pass is caught by Burkett. Out of bounds at the 49 of Washington. Make it Trumaine Johnson. Tim Morrison on the stop. A gain of 11. So the last two passes have been successful for 24 yards. We have 156 to go in the third quarter. And the Bills need a lot of hurry up here. Kelly's pass is caught. Burkett makes the play. And another first down at the 32. The Redskins are claiming there was a fumble and a recovery. And they're right. Burkett popped it up after the catch. And on the fumble, the Redskins recover. And look at Jim Kelly's. Look. Evidently, there are two types of fumbles. There are quarterback fumbles where if you just get near them, it's, a, it's not called a fumble. And then if you make a catch, as we're going to see here, there's Burkett. He makes the catch. There's the shot. And there's the ball coming out. Now, that is, that is a fumble. But certainly nothing like the one we'd seen earlier in the first half. So Todd Bowles with an interception and a fumble recovery. Four turnovers, and that one with the Bills finally getting some momentum going, trailing 27-0, and right now you'd have to say that it's just not the Bills' day. The Redskins have taken things away. Machine Gun Kelly has been a brilliant, you know, shoot blanks with nothing in the gun. So the Redskins on their own 33. Jeff Bostick is now the center replacing Russ Grimm. who's gone over 100 yards, okay. runs right into Scott Radisson. Well, if, I were, if, there were a, if there was a football team that I would say would be extremely difficult, difficult to come back against, it would be the Redskins because of the outstanding running that they've done today. They just eat up too much time on the clock. Sure, you might score, but they're very capable of driving 60 yards in about nine minutes and taking away what any threat you might have. Second down and nine with a minute to go in the third quarter. Delvin Bryant in the backfield. Bumble. Bumble. Bills have no. I, I'm not sure now. Yes, the Bills recover. There was a Bill who had it and then lost it, but Buffalo picks it up, and we'll see them on. Leon Seals, the rookie, made the hit. 
on Kelvin Bryant. Simple little play, handing back deep, just trying to get some yardage. But actually, Seals comes inside without making a tackle, reaches and grabs the arms of Bryant and pulls the football out, causing the fumble. Bentley had it and lost it, and then that man, Scott Radisick, formerly with Kansas City, recovered it. And so now the Bills were the first and ten on the Redskin 34. To Reed and a great catch by Reed. That was sensational with Darrell Green defending on the play, and it's going to be first and goal for the Bills. Washington mixing up their coverages had been successful in the first two and a half quarters, but now they blitz, allowing Reed to go man for man. He gets by number 28 Green and makes a great catch. 29 yard pickup. 20 seconds to go now in the third quarter. First and goal. Gets to Jim Kelly. And Dexter Manley gets his second sack of the game and the third by the Redskins. Putting Burkett in the slot and taking Reed to the outside. Kelly having a combination route to the left. A pick. The pick is taken away by the Redskins as they dissect the, the uh, pick, forcing Kelly to hold the football, giving up the sack. A loss of 11, and that will do things in the third quarter the end of the third quarter here at Rich Stadium in Buffalo with the score the Redskins 27 the Bills nothing at the fourth quarter here at Rich Stadium in Buffalo Dick Stockton and Terry Bradshaw and a Redskin route right now 27 to nothing over the Buffalo Bills second down and 17 coming up for the Bills Jim Kelly, by the way, has thrown at least one touchdown in 11 straight games. The Buffalo record is 12, set by Joe Ferguson. That's on the line. No more. Touchdown pass right there to Andre Reed. Finally, something to cheer about here. And the Bills are on the scoreboard on a TD pass. As you can see, Reed in the slot. Number 83 is totally uncovered. Straight down the field, reads the safety. The safeties are split. The linebacker from a lot trying to get back and help out, but too late. Walt Walton, number 40, coming over, but once again, it's too late. Good read for that time by Kelly to get it to Reed. And it's now 24 to 6 to score. Reed, second touchdown reception of the ball game. Norwood, the kid holding, and the kick is good. We'll return to Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, New York, after this word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota and Forerunner, City Smart and Country Tough in one powerful package. Michelob, so exceptionally smooth, the night belongs to Michelob. And by Duracell, introducing freshness dating from Duracell. Now there's a date code on every new pack. And we're back at Rich Stadium as the Bills finally score, trailing now 24 to 7. Andre Reed with his sixth reception of the game. And now Kelly has thrown at least one touchdown in 12 straight games to tie Joe Ferguson with the Bills club record. 27 to 7 to score. Favor the Redskins. Haji Sheik with two field goals. Schrader had run for a touchdown and thrown two to Kelvin Bryant. I think, doesn't Giannis hold the record for consecutive games? Something like 32 or something like that? Pretty amazing. Short kick. And Keith Griffin at the five. And he is hit hard at the 20 yard line. Good coverage by the Bills. Norwood's kick did not go far. And the stop is made by Scott Radisick. So if Joe Gibbs wanted a ball control, ball control he has received in a big way. Rushing yardage, time of possession. Can't get any better than that. Not only does the, the rushing yardage and the time of possession do a lot for your football team, but he's accomplished today what he wanted to do was eliminate mistakes, get Schrader in the game, get him accurate, get his running game going, win football games. He's got both wide receivers, Monk and Clark, down to the left. First and 10 at the 21 yard line. 12 seconds into this fourth quarter. Play action. Schrader on the run, and the 
pass incomplete intended for Art Monk. Pass was low. Radisic was covering. And once again, Schrader, who better long, has sometimes problems throwing that intermediate pass. Well, that time, the defense of Schrader, you took him out of the pocket and put him on the run, Dick, and did something he hasn't done all day, which is throw the football on the run. And I found as a quarterback, it was more, much more difficult for me to throw going to my right than to my left. For whatever reason, Schrader at that time just didn't get his shoulder square and throw the football the way he can throw it. Second down. Melvin Bryan is in now at running back. And Bryant gets the call. And he wins his way to the 28-yard line. Darrell Talley makes the tackle. Gain close to about seven yards for Bryant. Don Bro signals things in. There he is. In the white hat. Normally he goes through a lot of gyrations. This was an easy one. Third down and three. Sanders in motion. And Schrader's nowhere to go. And Bryant was the intended receiver. And a penalty marker down. And a personal foul. They're going to call a personal foul on Leon Seals. Personal foul. Rushing the passer. Number 96. Right. I don't think you're going to win a lot of points no. if you're a rookie going over to a veteran referee like that. No, you're not. And wisely so, these teammates push Seals out. You know, he's got a Jeep with Dr. Sack on it, and he only had a... Well, he didn't have a sack at all, so today he said, well, I'm going to get me a sack, and he said, I'll just give me a sack, and then I'll add a little bit of something extra to it, you know, and he got a penalty for it. And we knew that because Dr. we were following him to practice. How do you get Dr. Sack and you don't even have a sack? I don't understand that. Well, Jay Schrader's all pro restaurant. Yeah, but he went to the Pro Bowl. See, that makes yeah. you all pro. Yeah. You know what? He can pull it anything he wants. Absolutely. Right? Make the kind of money he makes that too. Rogers, automatic first down, and they're up to the 43 yard line following that penalty. Rogers in and gets the call. George Rogers showing the style that the Redskins like when they got him from the Saints. Tally makes the tackle and a gain of seven yards on that carry. The scene is Rich Stadium in Buffalo, New York. Not much for the fans. Upwards of 70,000 to cheer about today. The Bills 3-3 three and three are trailing the Redskins 27-7. Redskins have capitalized on turnovers. They've been four by the Bills. Schrader has thrown two touchdown passes, one for another, and a great defense by the skin. And George Rogers may have another first down for Washington. Rogers going over 100 yards today. Starting again after hurting his shoulder in the first game of the year. Mesner and Bentley on the stop. And George Rogers has gained 120 yards thus far. I would say that George Rogers' career looks good. Mm -hmm. And this was a pivotal game, and he himself admitted it. Well, he hadn't played, and as an athlete, you begin to question yourself because of injuries, and it has to he has to personally feel awfully good that He's rushed for as much yardage as he had and has not so far re-injured his toe. First and 10 at the Bills 46. Rogers. And Rogers gets a couple. Scott Radisick to tackle. You've talked about Jay Schrader today, Terry, and I think there's maybe a a subplot to this game because there's been a lot of talk all week about the great comeback yeah, of Jim Kelly in Miami and not only here in Buffalo but in Washington too and Schrader reads the papers and sees the clips. He is a competitor and I think that he felt he had to respond to the challenge today and he has in a big way because Schrader doesn't feel he has to take a backseat to Kelly Ray. He should. Uh, certainly proved himself taking his team to the championship game last year making the full burst on the and he got out of Kelly. He looked at so yeah, that was a big shot, but I think Schrader. Rogers caught that 
ball. It was deflected did. by McNanny, and everything going the Redskins' way today. You notice that? <laughs> well, when you run the football and you dominate the line of scrimmage, good things just naturally happen. You're going to see a pass while we were talking about Schrader looking downfield, hoping to go deep. Turns around, relief pass out in the flat, should have been intercepted, was not. McNanny knocks it up in the air, and then Rodgers comes down with the reception. Would you believe it? That is his first reception of the season. Of course, he hasn't played much. Well, when they throw the football, they take him out and bring Brian in. Third and five at the 41 of Buffalo. And Schrader pass to Brian incomplete. Tally was shaken up before, defended on that play, and it's fourth down. Once again, a short pass by Schrader that's poorly thrown. A strong arm quarterback just cannot get back quick enough, set up, and unload the ball quickly. He has a tendency, his nature is to look downfield, and when you force him out of his natural environment, his natural thinking, he just does not throw the football well. He doesn't like it, doesn't care anything about it, so consequently, he's not going to do it well. Steve Cox will kick, and Ron Pitts is back for the bill. Kennedy marks it down. Oh, bad kick. They got a piece of it, I believe, and it takes a redskin roll, and Reggie Branch will down it at the two-yard line, but a marker down. Bills apparently got a piece of that punt by Cox. And another flag. There been many penalties today on punt situations, and that will be against the Redskins, and they're going to have him kick it again. Even, sure. though, even though they're going to kick it again, Vernon Deed did one of the smartest things I've ever seen a guy go down on a punt do. He tackled his own man. Well, he's a formation foul. Six men in the line of scrimmage. Number 31. He tackled his own man who was going to roll into the end zone. He got in front of him and leaned back and pushed him back. Smart play by Dean. Look at Gibbs. He's furious. See, Gibbs has been spending a lot of time with the special teams. He's disappointed in that and the penalties, and he's furious. Now we've got six guys on the line of scrimmage again. He's going, what, what's going on here? Mental mistakes. Steve Cox struggled last week. Averaged 32 and a half yards. We'll do it again, and Pitts goes back to a C for the Bills. Exactly 11 minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. And a fine kick by Cox, and he takes no chances and boots it into the end zone for a touchback. 46-yarder that time. And so the Bills will go on offense again at the 20-yard line. We have a lot of time left, but a lot of way for Buffalo to come back in this one. Ball control all the way. Outstanding defensive performance. Kelvin Bryant, two TD receptions, and Washington leading 27-7 with 10.52 to go in the fourth quarter, and it's been exactly the way Joe Gibbs wanted it, and tell us about Schrader. They had a lot of razzle-dazzle plays today, reverses and some, so much. Well, they've had three reverses by Monk. They set that up off that Bullets play, then they came back on the same play. They ran one play one time, came right back with it. This time, Schrader bootlegs it. Makes it look like a run, keeps it, no one outside, turns on that tremendous speed that all quarterbacks have. And that made it at the time 17 to nothing in the first half, and that was a big score. Kelly, meanwhile, on first down, hits Andre Reed, and Reed is close to a first down, short by a half a yard at the 29. Darrell Green on the tackle, and so Jim Kelly now has hit his last eight passes. Reed with the touchdown reception has gone over 100 yards. Kelly up the middle, gets Harmon out of the backfield. He gave ground, but it's good enough for a first down for the Bills at the 33-yard line. The tackle again by Darrell Green. Kelly's doing the thing he likes to do, and that's throw the football, do it fast, don't allow the defenses to change, get an extra defensive back, take a snap, fire down the field. Rob Riddick going right, chased by Mann. Mann missed him, but Riddick Coleman didn't. And that is Buffalo's first rushing attempt this half. They went through the entire third quarter and nearly five minutes of the fourth quarter without running the ball. 
I've got into a situation stick where I actually threw 15 or 20 passes in a row, and it's much easier like that because if you have one or two incompletions, you don't worry about it. You say, hey, we're behind. I'm going to throw 10 or 12 more. You relax. You become you open. When you relax, your eyes open up, and you're able to see clearly. Second and nine. Bills on their own 34, and the pass intended for Trumaine Johnson and covered by Morrison. And that ball was overthrown. Coming up next on CBS, most of you will see the Minnesota Vikings against Seattle. Minnesota trying to move closer to the Chicago Bears. They're going to have to vault over the likes of Tampa Bay and Green Bay. They've been battling today, and Seattle, a contender in the AFC West. It'll be third down and nine for the Bills. It's a first down, fumble perhaps after the reception, and now they're ruling an incomplete pass, I think. That's really incomplete. Kelly making his appeal over to the official. Trumaine Johnson was the intended receiver. Trumaine went down, made a simple little turn in, looked back at Kelly. As you can see, going up, turns inside, reads his linebacker, sees it, sets down, there's the catch. Both feet down, but then he fumbles the football. So what the refs are saying is he didn't have control with both feet hit the ground. Yeah, it wasn't even close. It was a clear, incomplete pass. Malat covering it. And now John Kidd will be kicking it. And Eric Yarber is back for the Redskins. Kelly marker down again. Good kick by Kidd. And Jarber back to the 15. Runs into three bills and down at the 22. A 51-yard kick by Kidd. And it was Butch Roll who made this stop. Penalty was against Buffalo. And that'll nullify that fine kick by Kidd, who had a great year a couple of seasons ago. A good opening game and then has tailed off. He's been the regular kicker. For the last three years. Illegal formation foul. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Number 45. We've seen that a lot today. Well, that's the third time. That's the fourth time we've seen that call. Six men on the line of scrimmage. They're not calling a number, so I don't know who the who the guilty party is. Normally, it could be an up back or it could be the white guy. Looks like it's drained 45. Let's try to look at it. Look in there. He's so mad right now. He wants to throw one eighty yards. to hit for the exits here at Rich Stadium. Another good kick by Kidd. And he sends Yarber back this time even deeper. And Yarber lines up at the 30-yard line. A 58-yard kick that time. Eugene Marv on the stop. And George Rock. We're back here at Rich Stadium. Dexter Manley and Charles Mann. And I guess the race is on again in the battle for sacks. Yeah, Manley with two, Mann with none. I wonder if Dexter's telling him how he did it. And he says, I want my money after the after the <laughs> game. You know I've got a head. You've got five. I've got two and a third. Mann says, I'm not so sure about that third. I've called the league office. I think they're going to take it down. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Fiddle, little friendly rival. Another, another story, too. Old Manley thought that they were filming a show on him, and they were actually doing it on Man. So he had a little bet with Man. He said, watch me when I walk in front of the camera. They'll follow me with it. He walks. They stay on Man. <laughs> Hurt his feelings. I know. Egos ride high on that defensive line. Got to have them. First and ten, Redskins on their own 30-yard line. George Rogers. Bruce Smith making the tackle, and the whistle had blown. Dave Butts, the oldest active player in the National Football League. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Plays many years down at the tackle spot. Look at the helmet. Same helmet he had when he came in as a rookie, I bet. Got the flu. He's over the flu. Ooh, look at that helmet. Look at that tape job on that thing. Remember George Allen was criticized when he traded for him and gave up several draft picks you think that was a good move well he didn't he didn't cough in two draft choices and four million dollars i bet 
Talking about draft choices and trades with Blockbuster yesterday. Involving the Bills. Second down and eight. Kelvin Bryan in the game. Bryant nowhere to go, and down he goes by Fred Smurlis. There's Alvin Walton, number 40, strong safety. Obviously setting some trends around the National Football League with the, the new style. When I came in in 70, it was the afro, you know, the thing that went way out and down around the shoulders and scared everybody. And now they shave it and, and uh, do all this. I don't know what that is, but it looks pretty good. I like, like it. Like I the, like it. It's like the Riggins stuff. You know, they've got these VCR tapes at home now, and they tape their games while they're going. Set a little timer, a computer. <laughs> I like that album. <laughs> Terry Bradshaw likes it. You bet. I'm going to get one of those. Third that, down and seven at the 33. Might be natural, though. Got it. Later going deep. Art Monk. And it's, the ball seemed to take off just at the end. And Odom's covering Art Monk. And it'll be fourth down with eight minutes remaining. And the Redskins will kick. Well, coming up next Saturday, CBS Sports Special, the Quest for the NBA crown, beginning at 2 o'clock Eastern, 3 Pacific. Pretty good fireside chat by our analysts, Billy Cunningham, Tom Heinsohn, Hubie Brown. All involved, Pat O'Brien hosts the show. Takes another Redskin roll. Cox kicking some of the ugliest punts I've ever seen, but they're so, they're so crazy looking that when they hit as a punt returner, you have no idea which way they're going to bounce, right, left, over your head. So he kind of neutralizes the punt returner as he sits there and watches it bounce everywhere. A little tripping. The last three punts, flags have been thrown. And Jerry Markbright had a busy day today. Special teams. The the Triple, number 50, number 50, number 50 offense, offense. Raven Caldwell. Raven Caldwell in the opening game of preseason this year on special teams, lost his helmet, made a tackle, and forced a fumble that resulted in a score. And I think from that moment on, the Redskin coaches, loving those special team hits, admired Raven Caldwell. I guess what that means is, is that Raven Caldwell has an extremely hard head. <laughs> I guess. This time, Cox will kick from inside the 10. 7.47 remaining. Great kick by oh. Cox will send Pitts. He hurt us. And that ball may not get to the end zone. Oh. It doesn't. It's a touchback as the Redskins. Tim Morrison couldn't keep the ball inbounds. He had a shot to hold it and down it on the one. A 73-yard kick. Morrison should have left the ball alone. I don't believe the football would have bounced into the end zone. The wind is actually blowing against that ball, trying to prevent it from bouncing. Now, notice that it goes up, hits on the other end. Now, he catches it. All he had to do was, bat, you know, bang it back, take the right hand, you know, and hit it backwards. It could have done that very easily without tackling the ball. Oh, well. <laughs> so, something doesn't go against for the Redskins today. Kelly on the 20-yard line in the crowd. Completes the pass to Burkett. And they're going to line up in a hurry here, trailing by a score of 27 to 7 with 7.20 remaining. Clock run. Henry marked it down. I wonder if Mann took off in a hurry or Devlin drew him off. Devlin might have moved. One of the problems that Mann 71's giving. Devlin is by getting out so wide, he's forcing Devlin to really upside number 71 defense. First down. It was on man. Look, Devlin, the right tackle, obviously is moving before the ball is snapped, so that should be offsides offense, not offsides defense. He drew that time Charles Mann, number 71 off. First down, you got it? 
Bills have a first and ten on the 30. We're in the fourth quarter. Kelly and Harmon with a fine catch out of the backfield is brought down by Monty Coleman at the 36-yard line, and they're talking it up on the Redskin bench. Second and four. And the pass thrown away. Might have slipped out of Jim Kelly's fingers, so it'll be third down and four. Redskins had the lead all the way in this game. Haji Sheik, as you look at Jay Schrader, relaxing with a field goal, and Jay hit Bryant with the first of two touchdown passes. Bootleg one in. Haji Sheik with another field goal. And this pass is caught, and good enough for a first down to Burkett. Hanging on him is Morrison, good for 11 yards. Corners are just backing off. They're going to give Buffalo all the little 8 and 10 yarders they want, feeling that they've got this game under control. And Kelly says, well, we'll just continue to take them as we march on down the field. There's another one. And that pass is caught. Short of the first down, Trumaine Johnson. Look for, a, look for a setup here, Dick, where they've run the comebacks now about six times. Make that little comeback move, then turn it up the field. It'll be wide open for a touchdown. Well, the Bills uh, not going to get far with those short passes exclusively. And here's one that is overthrown. Andre Reed, who caught the only touchdown pass of the day by the Bills. The seven-yarder, Green, covering on the play. Well, the Redskins, 5-1, their only loss of the year was to the Atlanta Falcons, 21-20, second game of the week. Minnesota, Seattle, Detroit, Denver, coming up in the next game. Vikings still unbeaten as far as their regulars are concerned. They don't know of any strike. They say, well, as far as we know, we haven't lost yet. Guard Monk, who has been successful on three reverses today. Third down and two. Kelly's pass. And it's caught by Reed, and that'll be a first down in the Redskin territory at the 42. Darrell Green covering on the play. Last week, the Redskins were rusty, beating the Jets in a comeback, and they look awfully good today. Kelly pumps one and throws it at the feet of Harmon incomplete. Kelly running over to the bench, pointing to his coaches. He saw something when he pumped the football. He ran over and told them, a suge he suggested a play to them. Look, I saw this. Let me run this. And so now he'll run back in the huddle and call two more plays. Well, the Indianapolis Colts beat the New York Jets 19 to 14. So let's take a look right now at the standings in the AFC East. The Colts have the lead. Buffalo heading for a loss. The Jets have lost. Miami was leading Pittsburgh last time we checked, and the New England Patriots are facing the Raiders. We've got an update on those two. Kelly airs it out. Riddick, the intended receiver, covered by Rich Malat, who had to go long downfield. Schrader and Rogers together with an outstanding performance today. They're talking it over. Rogers telling him how his career is on the rise again, and Schrader sitting there not at all happy with himself. And I, I, I guarantee you, he's mad because he missed Monk early on that long pass on third down. Patriots are leading the Raiders 23 to 20 in the fourth quarter, so they could join the Colts at the top. Kelly completes to Harmon. Coleman brings him down at the 39-yard line. One thing nice about these little little passes is that he, you can certainly build up nice stats now. And at the end of the game, you can say, hey, I was 28 for uh, 40, had a little rough start, 320 yards, but well, you get the old bottom line always, well, did you win? So, fourth down, and the Bills, who were successful earlier on fourth down, they need six yards, and they're not going to get it, as Kelly is tackled by Marcus Cook. Kelly's got to be upset with his receivers because when he started scrambling, <laughs> stood there and looked at him instead of going deep. Miami Dolphins leading 35 to 24 over the Pittsburgh Steelers in the fourth quarter. So a victory by Miami would bring them to within a game of the lead. It's really a tight race. <laughs>
Buffalo Bills, 27 to 7, and easily on their way to their sixth victory in seven starts. Timmy Smith in the ball game, leading Russell in the preseason, and on his first play, Smith gets a first down to the 46. Ron Pitts making the tackle. This is Marcus Cook. Pitts was uh, Smith was the fifth round draft pick out of Texas Tech and led the Redskins in rushing in preseason. Had not played yet this season. Philadelphia leading St. Louis 21 to 16, which has an effect obviously in the NFC East. And we'll try to update those standings for you. First and ten for the Redskins on their own 47. Four and a half minutes remain. Roland Mitchell. Timmy Smith missed his whole senior year at Texas Tech. And he was the big man in preseason when both Rodgers and Bryant were hurt. Attendance today at Rich Stadium and many of the fans have departed. 71,640. Second and three. Good enough for a first down to the Buffalo 42. Well, coming up next, it'll be the Minnesota Vikings against the Seattle Seahawks. Big matchup, Minnesota with okay. hopes of wild card, and Seattle with hopes of even more in the AFC West. Some of you will see Detroit against Denver. Check your local listing. Tonight on CBS starts with 60 minutes. Following that, it's Murder, She Wrote, starring Angela Lansbury, followed by a CBS miniseries, Echo in the Darkness. Part one, a true story based on the best-selling book joke by Joseph Wambach. Smith with the carry on first down, and he's got it inside the 35-yard line. Dexter. Yeah, you get a little, probably, uh, Got to feel good about today coming back. You know, like Ped won't said today was a game for him, but it was really like a preseason game because yeah, he's yeah. been hurt and he's missed so far this season just about everything. So he's back and got to be feeling good about himself. Well, this game has been decided, but other scores, the Chicago Bears have come back to take the lead over Kansas City 31 28. Jim McMahon has brought them back with two touchdown passes to Willie Galt in the fourth quarter, and that game is also watched closely by Redskin fans as Smith carries on second down and gets a yard. Fred Smurlis makes the stop. Why is that important? Because both teams are amongst the top four with five and one records. To go here at Rich Stadium in Buffalo, the Washington Redskins with by far their most impressive game of the season with their regular players. Leading by a score of 27 to 7. Buffalo scoring after the Redskins had built up a 27 to nothing lead. Right here, it's third down and one for the Redskins on the Bills' 32 yard line with two minutes to go. Smith going wide as the first down and runs into Ron Pitts. Smith carry. The New Orleans Saints rebounding from their loss to the 49ers. Trounced Atlanta 38 to nothing. 49ers are playing the Rams coming up later on. And the Saints will hold on to second place. And if the Rams can surprise the 49ers, the Saints could move to within a game of the lead in the Western Division. Atlanta falls to two and five. Jim Moore extremely upset last week with the Saints. Shoot them out in the locker room. Told them they didn't deserve to be mentioned as a good football team. And everyone was saying in New Orleans, well, this could have some repercussions and possibly the Saints will go to pieces. But by that 38 to nothing, looking they gave the fact that I'd say it worked for them. Using the, the clock, Smith in the middle. Charles Mann. Charles Mann is a realer in the offseason, and he said he gave it all up. He went to Joe Gibbs to say, 
this is going to be my year. I'm in my fifth year. I was a letdown last year because I had knee problems. This is the season I want to really establish myself and stick out as a possible All-Pro. Had five sacks coming into the ball game. Manley has picked up two, but basically, Mann has been the outstanding defensive lineman for the Redskins this year. Credits his uh, Durant. He ran up and down a heel. And he says, boy, that's the thing that really helped me a lot. Got his legs strong, went up, went up it, came down back. job of ball control by the Redskins and they will go six and one on the year the Bears if they hold on to their lead will also have that record 49ers and Rams still playing and San Diego the other club in the NFL with a five and one mark and that will do it Jay Schrader comes to Buffalo and they're talking about Schrader not Kelly as this game is history and for Terry Bradshaw, this is Dick Stockton saying so long from Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. The final score, the Washington Redskins 27 and the Buffalo Bills 7. Coming next, the second game of our doubleheader. You'll see Minnesota at Seattle or Detroit at Denver. Check local listings for the game in your